Okay, welcome everybody. I'm very excited today to give you this word. And it's a word that I uh, enjoyed this week. I was reading this from the book of Hebrews. I'm studying the book of Hebrews today. And it's a very amazing book. And I want to uh, suggest or advise you to read the book in this week or two to come because it's a very interesting book. But we're also going to go to a little bit of other scriptures. There's only two parts in the Bible we're going to do tonight. Uh, my message is also not that long. So in practice, as children of God, we have received an inheritance. You know, when somebody passes, usually that person um, then leaves something for their people. And most people call that an inheritance. Okay. So Jesus did exactly that for us. He died. And because he died, he left us an inheritance. And children of God has that inheritance from Jesus. We just have to know how to take a hold of that inheritance that he has left us. We need to know how to take hold of those things and say, I accept it. I receive it. I walk in it. And, and even though we go through trials and believe you me, we do. And there's things that happen, but the inheritance is still there. It doesn't mean it goes away when you go through a trial or a tribulation. All right, so it's uh, his will that he left us this. Now, most people, when they pass on, the family look for a testament. But uh, we have a New Testament from Jesus. And what is in this New Testament, why it's such a beautiful scripture for me, is because we inherited this um, testament or everything that's in there from Jesus the day that he died. And for me, it's a beautiful word. He died for us believers, leaving his testament in order for us to receive our inheritance and we can walk in it now. All right, so I'm going to take you to the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 15 and 17. It's only two scriptures I'm going to give you there. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. It says, Hebrews 9, verse 15 to 17. Christ the Messiah is therefore the negotiator. Okay, somebody that negotiates is a speaker or a delegate who says, okay, you want this, you want this, let's negotiate and see how we can compromise to get each other what they want. And so he's a negotiator and a mediator. A mediator means he's a go-between between God and us. So Jesus is in the middle. From the Father to Jesus to us, he's the go-ahead, the in-betweener, the third party. He's the referee between me and God. He's the referee. Right? He's the referee. So you say to God, I want this. God says, you can have this. And Jesus says, I died for you. You can have it. The end is what? There you go. Is it more This is awesome. So I like that very much. He says, he's a referee or a third party or a go-between, the mediator, of an entirely new agreement or testament. Now, the Greek word there is diatheke, and it means through the grave. He had to go through the grave to give you this New Testament. That is beautiful. Jonathan, <laughs> I think it's beautiful. It says, so that those who are called, that's you and me, we are children of God, because Ephesians 1 says, you've been called by God, you've been predestinated, you are a son of God. You've been sealed with the Holy Ghost. You were before ordained. There's so many promises in Ephesians 6. It says, oh, Ephesians 1, chapter 1. It says, you were called and offered, and it may receive the fulfillment of the promised everlasting inheritance. And this is the New Testament. This is our birthright. You know, when somebody is born, they get a little piece of paper and they say, the first thing they ask is, what is the name of the child? They want to put what is the name, the surname, and then he gets a number, an ID number. But the first thing that goes on there is, what is his name? And so if you belong to Jesus, then you have a birthright to be called a son of God because you were called. So you say, I'm a believer. I'm a Christian. So in the spiritual realm, I always think of it this way, that there's a, like a birth certificate 
And my name that's on there is not Nomsa. My name on there is not Janssen van Vieren. My name on there is not anything that anybody knows me on this earth. My name on that birth certificate says believer in Christ. And because of that, I have the birthright to receive the inheritance which he has given us. It's beautiful. And then he says, since a death has taken place, Jesus died for us, which he rescues, he rescues us, he delivers us, and he redeems us through that from the transgressions committed under the old or the first agreement. So the old one has passed on. Jesus came to fulfill the Old Testament. We are now under the New Testament. So what was the first old agreement? That was the children of the law, those who believed in Moses and the law that he gave. We are no longer under that. For where there is a last will and testament involved, the death of the one who made it must be established, must be recognized, and it must be well known. So if you know the scriptures, you know the promises. If you know the promises, you can say, Oh, I'm going through a trial, but I believe Jesus is my Lord. I believe he died for me. I believe that I'm saved. I believe that I'm healed. I believe that I'm still going to make it. No matter what you're going through, you can hold on to the promises because this is your birthright and it's your inheritance. And so he says, for this will uh, and testament is valid and takes effect only at a death of someone. Since it has no force or legal power, as long as the one who made it was alive. So Jesus left us this uh, testament because he has died. So Jesus died for you and for me to leave us a new inheritance. So we are beneficiaries. You know, when you open a bank account and you go on the, uh, online and you want to pay somebody, then it says you must put in the beneficiary and then you put their name and their number and then you pay them. This money must go there. That's my beneficiary. Jesus said, well, I'm dying on the cross for you. Now I'm saying, who is my beneficiaries? My children. I leave my children this inheritance. This is their testament that I'm leaving there. They are my beneficiaries. So whatever I can do, they can do. If I can heal, I leave them as a beneficiary, a spirit of healing that they can use to heal other people. When they need something, I am their Lord and Savior. I leave them a, as a beneficiary. I leave that to them so that they can be able to do that. And I think it's beautiful. And he says there, uh, so you are the recipient of this testament that he has left you. This is why I love it so much. Now, if you go to 1 Corinthians 11 uh, to 26, he said, now when he had given thanks, he broke the bread. Now, um, I wanted to do the bread today, but I completely forgot to buy it. So I really apologize. We'll do it next week. But he broke the bread and said, now, I want to just talk about this word broke. Because you're going to get an amazing revelation if I explain to you what this word, when he broke the bread, he said, this word broke means that it is totally busted. It's this, uh, it's totally broken up in pieces when he broke it he gave it to us and he said take and eat have it or devour it swallow it and consume it because this is my body this is my corpse you know the word corpse is actually a french word it's not an english word the word corpse is actually a french word it means body um yeah i was learning that when i was at my last french lesson i'm learning to speak the french as you know so I was very interested when they we did the body part, you know, the eyes and the ear and the mouth and whatever, and we came to the body and it says corpse. And I thought, but that's an English word. It's not. It's a French word. Anyway, this is my body, he said, and what remains, listen, which is broken and wrecked for you. And he says, do that and call this affectionately. So in other words, warmly or lovingly or tenderly or kindly to remember and similarly when supper was ended he took the cup also saying this cup is the new testament so why am i putting these two scriptures here together because the sweet communion when we do that and we have the sweet communion it's a part of the scripture that i gave you in hebrews 9 they go hand in hand remember isaiah 34 
I think it's verse 16 says that when you find a revelation in the Bible, you need to look at another scripture that's the mate of that revelation. So when you put those two together, you get a revelation. That's how the Bible works. You always have to look for the one scripture that goes hand in hand with the other scripture. Now this one in 1 Corinthians 11 that talks about the sweet communion, this one goes hand in hand with Hebrews 9 verse 15 to 17 that we did earlier about the testament and the agreement because we are the inheritance we've received the inheritance and so we've we've um, been called um, what is that word I gave you earlier we are the beneficiaries of that okay he says for every time you eat this bread okay and drink this cup now the cup can also talk about a prize or a trophy it's like Jesus was the prize he gave himself as a prize for us so that we can receive that. He said, you are representing and signifying and proclaiming the fact of the Lord's death. So let me take a minute to talk about these three very interesting words. Representing means to be a symbol of something or to stand in for. You re represent somebody. So the fact that Jesus died means now, he said, you are my beneficiary, so now you stand in the gap for me because I'm no longer here in flesh. I'm now in spirit. Now you are my representative. Now you, every time you drink the cup, you remember that you are a representative of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Et jou die, die so mm -hmm. Ja, dat is iets niet, ne? Dat is beautiful. And he says to represent, to, to be characterized as a representative of Jesus, to give the gospel to somebody else, okay? And signifying, which means telling somebody about the New Testament, and proclaiming. So it's like you're sending out a broadcast, you know, in the old, all the times they had this big round thing, and they used to call people, I don't know if they still use it today, maybe by the workers with engineers and stuff like that, with big buildings there. Uh, Harry, Harry, come here, I'm looking for you, or something like that, okay? So, but he says here, it's like that. Proclaiming means to broadcast that you are a beneficiary of the New Testament. And he has left you his inheritance. This is what you need to proclaim. You need to go and tell other people, hey, get excited. Look what Jesus did for you. He left you a testament. That testament says you are the beneficiary. Whatever it is that you need right now, he will provide for you. And this is while you're going through trials and while stuff is happening, get it in your mind. I am a beneficiary of the testament that Jesus left me. I am important because he left it for me because he died on the cross. And this for me is so beautiful. Because of his death and his passing away, until he comes back, we are the beneficiaries. We have received the inheritance from him. So when you go somewhere and you like to leave things behind for people that stay behind, I mean, most of us would like to do that. Like, um, you know, a sister that recently passed on and we miss her very much, but usually... People leave something behind for the family that stays behind. And that is like a beneficiary. They are now beneficiaries and they receive something. Now, Jesus did exactly the same for us. He left himself and everything he, he could do while he was walking on the earth. When he was walking here, he was healing, delivering, setting free, casting out demons, healing somebody. He was doing that. Now he's saying, I'm giving you that. You can go and do that, which I did. Which is why John 14, 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the very things I did, you can do, and more than that. He says, if I could do it, and I leave it to you in my testament, and I say, you are the beneficiary of those gifts that I had. Come on. You are getting those gifts that I had. I'm leaving you those gifts. Go and prophesy, go and heal, go and deliver, go and set free. This is your inheritance that I'm leaving for you. Take these things and go and give it out to somebody because you are the beneficiary. Share it with everybody. Proclaim it, broadcast it, shout it out loud. You can do everything that Jesus did. This is your inheritance. This is why it's so beautiful, these scriptures. It's more in that. Yeah. Wow, I've never seen it like this. And when I read it this week, I thought, wow, I really want to share this. 
And so, um, yeah, for the Lord's death, until he comes again. Okay, so his character, his gifts, his spiritual powers, his healing powers, his prophecy powers, his deliverance, everything he had, he left it for us. We must just believe it. Believe this is our testament. Believe I am a beneficiary. Jesus died and left this. Do what he said I can do. And then you go and you do what he said you can do. And that's why he says, you are the beneficiary. I left it for you. Why are you not healing them? Why are you not delivering them? Why are you not setting them free? I gave you everything. I died and I left it for you. Take up that spirit of healing. Take up that spirit of prophecy. Take up that spirit of casting out demons. And go and broadcast it out into the world that you can do the same. And this is this message. I mean, really, it's wow for me. All right, he says, everything he has is yours. And also remember, sometimes we battle financially also. I mean, everybody here has been in that place where we've battled financially. But he also says, all the gold and all the silver is mine. As long as you keep on saying, God will see me through, God will see me through, God will see me through. Trusting that I'm going to, he's going to come and he's going to help you. And so we have to believe that. And so sometimes we do get attacked by the minions of Satan because remember, Satan was defeated on the cross. Satan is not the one attacking us. Most people think when something happens, it's the devil that's attacking them. It's not. The devil was defeated. The one that's attacking us is these little devils, agents of Satan, little minions that are running around doing things to us that we think is the devil. All right, so... But we have that inheritance from God. And yet we do get attacked sometimes. We go through things. We go through stuff. Now, remember, after Adam fell in sin, death reigned. Okay? In every situation, there was death because of the fall of sin of man. But from Moses to Christ in that period there, the law reigned. Okay? To warn people of their sin. So it was first Adam who fell in sin. And then death reigned. A spirit of death. Then came Moses. And from Moses to Christ. There was a law. And then Christ came. And the moment Christ came. From there on to where we are today. This is grace period. So we are no longer under sin. He has taken our sin far away from us. As far as the east is from the west. And nobody can ever talk about you about that. Nobody can judge you. Nobody can say, ha, 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 I know it. Nobody can do that because he took our sin as far as the east is from the west. This is why this God is so amazing. Look what he did for us on that cross. No more sin. No more law either because we're not under Moses anymore. Because after Moses and the law, there was a dark period and then Christ came. And the moment Jesus Christ came, then it was grace. And now we're under grace. And even though we go through trials, we are still under grace. Even though we go through difficult times, we are still under grace. And this is what we need to proclaim and broadcast to the world. Yeah, we're going through a tough time, but I'm still a child of God. I'm still a believer. I'm still, I still have a testament. I still have um, all the gifts that he left me. I'm still, um, uh, what is the word, a beneficiary. Of what Jesus left me. And this is why the script, scripture is so amazing for me. If you break it open. Alright so. the uh, Matthew 10 22 says. Anything close to Jesus. Or anybody close to Jesus. Receive attack. And I can tell you in my life. The last year. That I've seen what has happened. I'm getting closer and closer to God. To do things for him. That he's called me to do. For many many years but the attacks had been in the last year and a half i mean you know it's not like just like that and it just you know it's like one after the other and then up until now it's like uh, but god is still on the throne and i'm still a beneficiary i still have a new testament and i've received what christ said i can do and he promised to see us through so in the face of your opposition do we stand do we cry? What do we do? 
I know we complain. I complain too. So what's up with this, Lord? Look at this. Now this is a problem again. What am I going to do with this? We do that. But in our mind and in our heart at the back, it's like, God is going to see me through this. I will survive. Because I am a beneficiary of this great testament that he has left me. This is why we will stand. So even though we go through opposition, it doesn't mean that you have to accept it. I always say to my people, use a spiritual stop, stop sign. Take a little stop sign for yourself. Make for yourself a little stop sign. Put the word stop. Take that. And when you see that devil coming, the agent of Satan, you say, stop, devil, stop. No more. I've had enough. And I know sometimes we forget about that. But the blood of Jesus through his death on the cross has given us everything you need to, uh, to carry on. And I'm encouraging you today as a child of God, um, that if you do receive visions and dreams and word, if you get word through the word or somebody come and say, I had a dream of you. Somebody phoned me yesterday and said, I had a dream of you um, two, three nights ago and you dreamed this and you did this. And I said, oh, I know what that is. I know exactly what God is saying to me. He speaks to you even through dreams and visions of other people. So it's important to write these things down. Okay. So if you don't stand, you will miss your miracle. And if you feel opposition, you will lose your miracle. You need to trust God for his inheritance that he left us. And you need to trust God that you are a beneficiary for everything that he said you can do. You can do and more, according to John 14 verse 12. And this is your word for me today. And I'm going to finish with this scripture for everybody. John 3, 31. He who comes from above is far above all others. He who comes from the earth belongs to the earth and talks the language of earth. His words are from earthly standpoint. He who comes from heaven is far above all others and far superior to all others in prominence and in excellence. Why? Why the scripture? Because if you understand you've received this inheritance and you're a beneficiary, then that scripture means you come from above and not from the earth. And this is why it's so beautiful for me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I think we can stop the thing. Thank you for watching, everybody. Until next week, God bless you.